Hello, and welcome to Get a Little Creative. I'm Becky Ferrant. I'm Jen Hadfield. And I'm Heather Mann. We're here to share the coolest craft ideas, the best creative blogs, and simple projects that anyone can do. Today we're talking about gallery walls with Shelly from House of Smiths. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Okay, so tell me, you have a new show. Yes, we're excited. It's called The House of Smiths, Her Passion, His Project, and it's a DIY home show for basically just like the everyday um, homeowner who wants to learn more um, DIY things in their home, projects to do on a budget. So you're working with your husband? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Yeah, that? Um, it is going to be interesting. It has been interesting. Um, there's definitely more that goes into that when you're with your spouse, but it's fun because we get to play off each other, and it definitely brings a new, um, you know, kind of view to our marriage and things that definitely. we can do. And you kind of see our failures and our screw ups, but also our passion for what we do and um, the things that we do and how we work together. And I think that's good to see on camera for people because you can do these projects with your spouse and um, succeed. <laughs> and still love each other. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a popular blog, thehouseofsmiths.com, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, and does your husband, is he involved in the blog? Yeah, at all? he loves it. He's super supportive of it. Um, it came out of necessity because we had so many friends who were wondering how we did our projects on our home. And so we um, started to blog about them and kind of record them like a journal. And it kind of blew up from there. And people, it's a really great platform because everybody has a home, right? So everyone <laughs> wants to know how to put molding in or how to use that saw. So it's nice because he has the know-how. He is really good with tools and all that, and I have this creative thing going. So we just play off each other, and it works really well, and we both have a passion for it. And all the ladies love him. <laughs> they do. <laughs> but you got him. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, He's let's fun. talk about some of your projects. Okay. Okay, this beadboard ceiling. Yes, that I was am, his idea. Okay, I love it, and it looks like it added a lot of character. Please tell me you guys didn't have bro broken necks after this. I mean, this uh, looks It wasn't too bad. We did hire, not hire, we, brother-in-law. We did, <laughs> we did um, hire out help for this. Um, we had um, some friends and family help, but mostly just the hoisting of the beadboard up. But once that was up and we got it nailed up, it was okay. And then we kind of framed it out with some chunky molding. And I think it just gives some element to the room that's different. It's right. not just a builder grade bathroom with the textured ceiling, you know? Yeah, so it nice. kind of makes it custom and cool. And we wanted some kind of paneling and the beadboard worked in there because it was just a square you know, bathroom, small yeah. bathroom. Well, I love the way it looks. I mean, it's Thanks. awesome. And the, you have a light blue on the walls. Yes, so it I love that. Serene it's color. definitely a girly bathroom. That's what we call it on our blog, the girly bathroom. We have three <laughs> girls, and we knew they were going to just be little for just that short time. So we wanted them to feel like ruffles and blues and, you know, all those fun it. things. So it's been really fun. Okay, so something that has taken the, blo the blogosphere by a <laughs> storm is your pantry. Yeah. Now, what possessed you to bling out your pantry? I mean, well. most of the time, it's a functional place. You open, you get your food, but it is like a joy to go in this yeah, baby. it's still okay actually it's so super functional now that like people ask me do you does it really stay like this like is this really how it looks did you just stage it for pictures no way like this really stays like this it's so fun to have things and nice to have things in their place and to have it pretty we honestly haven't had a pantry door on there for like a year and a half wow. because it's fun to look at it's a piece of decor and I think everybody has those weird awkward pantries the either the kind of triangle pantries or the one you just open and it's just shelves you know and I wanted it to be somewhere that, because you're in there all day, you know, every day, like yeah, going in, pulling out stuff absolutely. for kids and everybody. And I wanted it to be a place where when I opened it, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, cereal boxes everywhere, empty cereal boxes everywhere, <laughs> yeah. cracker boxes everywhere. Hide it. So yeah, so we did some really simple things. We just painted the whole thing white and then we painted the backs of the walls gray and put some actual vinyl decals on there instead of a stencil. Okay. Yeah. It almost looks like wallpaper. I mean, yeah. It's, it's really fun. It's it is. It's beautiful. I've seen it. Now with the gray, is it dark in there? I mean, do you No, feel it's not because the shelves are white and it's so small that it kind of reflects and then we have the white vinyl and things like that. So it works really well. And a lot of our stuff is white, you know, the flour and the sugar right. and all that. So it adds a different element. So you're not just seeing, you know, the dark space. Plus that, that room gets a lot of light. And I think you can do dark colors if you have a room that has a lot of light and you're going to do a contrasting color against it. It really makes it pop. For me, for me, I would like to do that just because I'm so afraid of decorating a large space. Yeah. A tiny little space yes. with a lot of that's color in it. That's more about. my speed just for like a training wheel Well, project. a pantry is forgiving too. I mean, right. you can shut the door or whatever. Yeah, so like it. you can totally yeah. do it. <laughs> Buy a quart of paint and just, you know, play Start around. There. Yeah. Right. That's kind of what we're all about, taking it one space at a time. That's our little tagline because it's so overwhelming for new homeowners, especially to just look at their house and be like, okay, yeah. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. This is a right. huge space. So we say, just take a shelf, just take a pantry, just take mm -hmm. a corner, like get a new chair. Because 
everyone feels motivated after they have a cute little space and they want to do more, right? It's totally empowering. When you have a space that you love, you, it makes you want to be creative in other areas right. of your house. Yeah, Just one little thing and it yeah. moves you to the next And you feel thing. like, I Definitely. can do this, you know, yeah. if you start small. And yeah. I love that you guys are going to focus on the small and, you know, working out. Yeah, for sure. We're excited. excited. Okay, so what we're here to talk about, and I love, oh my gosh, I love her gallery wall art. It is so unbelievable. pretty. Yeah, okay, tell me a little bit about it. I mean, what, I mean, obviously your kids are adorable. You probably yeah, want to show case them. Um, but what made you decide to take this on? Okay, so we had this, we, it wasn't a New Year's resolution, but we have so many fun pictures of our family mm -hmm. and they sit in our computer yeah, and our absolutely. camera. And it's so frustrating because I think, oh my gosh, we have that great picture and that great picture. I mean, it's so cheap to print them off, right? Absolutely. Even the big ones, like it's so inexpensive now. Mm -hmm. And we had done all these fun things to our home to make it custom. And there was no personality. Like, I mean, you know, personal personality in it. Sure. So we knew that pictures would do it, but we wanted to do it in a non-just frame here, frame there, you know, kind of way. So we decided to tackle the whole wall above this beadboard shelving that we had and make it kind of like a, just this photo gallery wall art. I mean, it's pictures of us, but the way that we tackled it is more of a, like an art piece. Yeah. I love the yellow that you use yeah, as the background fun. for your kids. Did I know, you plan we were, that? Yes, okay. we knew because we knew we wanted pops of yellow. Okay. That was our first big commitment. We're like, okay, if we're going to do the yellow, let's do it. And so we decided to do it through pictures because everything in our house, we did more on the neutral tone so we could add those pops. Mm -hmm. Because I think right. if you have things that are like forever, like the speedboard wall is yellow, right. you're always going to have to have yellow. Yes, right. So pictures, we can go if we want and take it against a red wall or a barn or a door or something right. so that it's not forever. You can always change it out. That's what I liked about it. Okay. And the piece that you added that we're going to kind of talk about today is the subway art. That's kind of, you know, the rage right now. Can you tell us what subway art is, where it originated? What do you, th what Jen's do you think? Jen's blog. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You know what? I honestly, like, I know it's an old schooly kind of thing with, um, you know, messages that people put out and things. I actually did. I got the idea from Jen's blog. Um, she had some cool subway art of places that she's lived with her husband, and I kind of wanted to put my spin on it mm -hmm. to kind of places we've lived. Um, and I think it's a good way to do kind of a graphic piece, like a, have, you know, graphic art without having it look cutesy. Yeah, so right? subway art is like a, a, a tall kind of, usually is it tall? It can be any and size. With, it can be with three words. It just, yeah, usually it's text stacked on top, you know, spaced out, right. you know, things like that. You can, you know, change the text different ways and do different things, but usually it's pretty graphic. Like you have usually the same font or one or two, mm -hmm. kind of mix them up a little bit. And it, I don't know if it really... I mean, it, for us, it's such a personal thing because it's places we've yeah, lived, absolutely. but not everyone would have to know that. You know, it could just be, it doesn't have to be places you've lived if you've lived in the same place. It could or be places you've visited, vacation, visited, yeah, yeah, names, numbers, things that you Wedding find dates, important. Birthdays, those kind of things. Yeah, anything it's, that's yeah. meaningful to yeah, you. Yeah, you can do pretty much anything with it. That's what I love and, about it. And, you know, it. I look at the picture and I think it just won't look, I mean, as cute as your family is, it just kind of, almost like brings it all together, that piece. It's I love just, it. Yeah, I love it. It looks awesome. And you know what? We had a lot of thought that went into, yeah. you know, the picture part because sure. you want to make sure it all goes together. So, so yeah. Yeah. well, so if you were going to recommend someone do, or you were going to give them advice about it, what yeah. would you? I'd love to make, I'd love to do that in my bedroom. I yeah. want to do a gallery wall, but it seems so overwhelming to get all of the different sizes Rings and, and mm -hmm. how do you arrange it? Like, what are your tips for, okay. for someone that's, you it know, trying scary. to, you know, I know we were scared too. We were scared too, kind of. Okay. So my first tip was gather lots of inspiration. You have to have like a point of reference, right? So for me, I went on Pinterest. Who loves Pinterest? Hey, Pinterest. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I gathered all in one place. You can do it on a file on your computer if you want to, but I took tons of photos from Pinterest, from blogs, from the internet, from other sites, and there's so much out there, so utilize it, you know, like magazines and all those other things. And most everything is online now, so you can find yeah. a million things. So I just went and pulled tons of gallery walls that I liked. And then I went back and kind of sat down and said, okay, what about these do I like? Well, you know, and what, how am I going to approach mine? Because I like this about this and this about this one. Okay. So that kind of leads into my second tip, which was create a plan of action. So for us, we knew we wanted it to look more modern. And mm -hmm. um, so we decided they all need to have the same color frames. So we that. had to yeah. find the same colored frames, but in different sizes. Some people want to do eclectic looks where they have like thrift store frames and things like that. That's super cool too. For this space. Did you spray better. paint the frames or nope. did you find them all? I just found them all at okay. Ikea okay. and we um, decided to kind of go online. You can't buy them online, but we decided to go online, see how much they were, um, kind of in our mind, work out where we would put them mm -hmm. so that it wasn't 
a total shocker when we got there and we're like, you know, wondering what we're going to buy. So we did that. So when we went, we were, we had that plan of action where we were going to find them. So that worked well for us. So I think if you decide like, we're going to have a lot of eclectic pieces or mirrors or you got to work that in, you know, and some people like to just throw it up there with this style. It didn't really work because we knew we needed it to fill the entire Entire space. space. And that was, that's the huge thing too. If you're doing it in your bedroom, decide what the span of the gallery wall is going to be first and then work stuff into it, usually from the outside in. And then that way you can kind of play with the after that. So with this wall, how (laughs) wide is it? I mean, I see a picture and it looks huge. Is it, is it a huge? It is really big. It's the whole span of our living room on the one side. Okay. So it is, it's, it's pretty big. <laughs> so like the big pictures that you have of your children, how big are those frames? Those are probably like 24 by 24. Okay. Yeah. They're wow. really big. Yeah. That's yeah. a big wall. <laughs> I know it's big. It is definitely like punchy in the face when you come yeah. in, but we love it. And I think that it, like I said, it's an art piece. You know, it's something that you look in and just kind of. And your makes art is your room. children. That's what I yes, love about it. That's I so love cool. That too. Yeah. So, like, I've seen some people that cut out pieces of paper and they put them yes. on the wall. Did yep. you do that, that so you could like move tip, it around? For sure. Okay. Paper templates all the way around. You can do computer paper and piece it together. That's what I did because I didn't have butcher paper. Okay. But you can do butcher paper. It's really easy because it's oversized. I just taped paper together and then put the frame on top, traced it around, and cut it out. It did take some time, but. It's so much easier to move paper around and not frames. Or maybe you could use old Christmas gift wrap or something like that. Like, you know, something that's like kind of ugly. You're kind of tired of it. (laughs) You should have your own show. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so paper templates for sure, because in that way you don't have to put the holes in the walls and do all those things. And then you can decide what you want to buy before you buy it. And you don't have to like buy things and take them back and things like that. And so, yeah, that worked really well for us. I waited till we had the frames to do it. I actually bought one or two extra because I wasn't sure what I would do with them and then returned them. But if you're doing like thrift store frames and stuff, that's not a problem. You can be like, okay, I need a frame around this size. You know, you can kind of work it in. But yeah, usually people have a couple of poignant pieces they want in their gallery wall or like look so they can start with that. Would you choose like a major piece, like one big? Yeah, I knew I wanted some really big frames and stuff and a big subway art. So I kind of had the wood up there beforehand and then kind of worked with the space that was left over for sure. Well, it is beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, we love it. It's one of my favorite projects that I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so what are you going to show us today? Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit on how to use vinyl for decor. Because I think it can be, I don't know, it can be just very, like, wordy and how much where your story begins kind of stuff. Or you can use it to really pop a space or do something more graphic. It doesn't always have to be the cutesy words of vinyl, you know. So I'm going to show you kind of the how-to from how to print it, pick it, transfer it, and then kind of talk a little bit more about the subway art. Awesome. Thank you so much. So we will be right back with a little project from Shelly. We're back with Shelly from the House of Smiths, and today she's going to show us how to apply vinyl. But first, Shelly, I want to talk about, we had said in in our first segment about your gallery wall, and you had told us about this amazing subway art. So can you tell us, this is a different process than you're going to show us. It's a little bit different, but it's still kind of the same. What I did with um, the gallery art was actually use the vinyl as a stencil instead of just the vinyl because I wanted to get more of a distressed look. So I actually um, painted this just really cheap, inexpensive piece of plywood black, and then I painted over it with a light gray. And it was a flat paint. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted more of like a matte look. Okay. So, um, and then I applied the vinyl and just picked out the negative, painted it white, and then peeled it off. After that was all done, then I took my um, mouth sander and just sanded it over the whole thing to give it kind of that old distressed, yeah, it really does. New York-y it, look. I you know? love it. Okay, yeah, great. It's kind of fun. Okay, well, let's go ahead and show us what you got. Okay. So I'm going to kind of show you the little tips and tricks on how to do vinyl quickly here. Um, when your vinyl, when you get your vinyl, it's going to come like this. It's just a regular piece of vinyl. There's two parts. There's the backing and then the sticky, um, the front, and then underneath will be the sticky vinyl. And what you're going to do is you're going to feed it into your machine. Um, you can use a silhouette, a Cricut, whatever you have, and you're going to get your image on your program, and then you are going to cut it out. Before I cut my image out on my machine, I actually draw a square around my image so that when I'm working with it, I don't have to take all of this excess and peel it up and then working with that whole big piece. Okay, stop the train. That was <laughs> worth it in and of itself. I yeah. do that all the time. I, I don't know. know why I didn't think and of then that. And peeling it, it's like falling and you're oh, just swearing and the kids just... are wondering what's going on. Okay, oh, you saved me fun. hours of heartache right, right. there. Love okay. it. <laughs> so I showed you this negative out, but usually I peel this big piece off first Okay. and then you're going to have the little square left and you're going to weed it that way. So then that way you can go with that. Okay, so what about these little ones? So with the little ones, you can do fancy stuff like um, with 
tweezers and things like that. But honestly, I just take it. If you kind of bend the paper, they pop out and then you're ready to go. And they'll be in the A's and the O's and stuff like that. So that's pretty much the basic of how okay. to print it. Once that's printed, you're going to take transfer tape and it comes in lots of different sizes, but with this transfer tape, you're just going to roll it out and you kind of want to do what I call a taco effect. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to bend it that way. You're starting from the middle so you don't get air bubbles. Okay. And then you just lay it down and then you're going to smooth from the middle out. Middle out. Yep. Okay. That's another good trick right yep. there. And then you're just going to rub it down here with a little spatula. I, this is a vinyl spatula, but you can use credit regular card. spatula, credit card, whatever you want. Cut off the excess here. And then it's ready to get cut around. So you can cut that. You do that and I'll show what okay, we're going right. to do next. I'm going to grab this frame okay. from you. Okay, so here we have a fun, um, we're going to do a frame and this is the glass of the frame and I've designed um, this vinyl to fit the entire frame. So the trick with this is when you have a large piece, um, you're going to want to use what I call a tape hinge. So you're just going to take some regular masking tape okay. and you're going to position your vinyl where you want on the frame. And then you're going to put tape on the top of it so it can act as a hinge. So then that way when you peel it up, it won't move around and scoot around. It's always going to be centered. Another great trick. Right. Thank it's going to be great. So you want to do this with yeah. me? You ready? <laughs> okay. So we're going to start from the edge. And what's going to happen is you're going to have these three layers, the vinyl, the transfer tape, and then the backing paper. Okay. I'm going to peel this up. You hold that. And I'll get this going. Oh. Okay. This is kind of a big piece. I'm going to have you help me, okay? Okay. So what we're going to do is you're going to hold that side. Okay. And we're going to kind of, let's lift it up. It's starting to stick. So we're going to kind of, maybe I can do this. Let's see. You're going to kind of just flow it down like this and just kind of roll it. That way you don't end up with a big bubble and then smooth from the center out. Wow. You have like no air bubbles. Seriously. <laughs> It's like th that taco effect is seriously like the key. Okay. You have to do the kind of fold in the middle so you're not just, you know, putting it down and then you have a big air bubble. And then you're just going to rub it and then we'll take off the backing paper. So now after everything has been rubbed down pretty good with our spatula, we're just going to go ahead and take that transfer tape off. Do you want to go ahead and do that? Okay. I mean, there's no trick. There is no, just... there really is no trick. Okay. You're kind of going to pull at a 45 degree angle a little bit. Okay. If it starts to come up, you can just kind of rub it back down. I usually kind of tend to pull like this oh, away. Okay. I actually um, do that right. Yeah, I do see? see, I do. It's kind of right. like a trial and error type thing. Once you start doing it, right. you kind of learn the tips and tricks to how to get it to stick down and do all those fun things, so you don't have to. Yeah, I mess think the key is like like what you're saying is just going like at like almost pulling it. This is the way I do it at least. Yeah. Pulling it like that. So then these little pieces don't yeah. pop up. And if they do, just go ahead and kind of stick them back down with your finger. Yeah. Not that big of a deal. It's Vinyl a really isn't that fragile. Right. So it's you actually kind of stickier than it. you think, too. It is. You know? Yep, it is. So then I just pull this last piece off. Do, do yep. the tape hinges go with it? That's fine. Yeah, the tape hinges can come off with it when you're done. And I can get my fingerprints off later, right? <laughs> yes, for sure. And vinyl, like I said, it's not so fragile. You can use Windex and kind of go over it and get your paper towel. Okay. So the frame here that we're going to do is actually... Um, We've just backed it with some fabric, with some fun turquoise fabric, um, and wrapped it around the back of the cardboard here. Oh, tricky, tricky. Yeah, tricky, tricky. So we're just going to go ahead and install the glass face side down. And at this point, you can do the windexing or whatever sure. that you need to do. And then you're going to put the turquoise backing behind it. Push down your little... Now, would there be a benefit to doing it backwards on the back you of could, it? You could, yes. Okay. You can also mirror it. If your program has it, lots of people don't okay. um, on some of the more simple programs, but if you can and your machine and program can mirror the vinyl, I usually do that. So then you can w Windex over the glass okay. and you don't have to... Oh, I love that. Look at that. So fun, so right? Nice. And yeah. it's just like a great piece of decor that you can put in a craft room or in a kid's room. It's really versatile and... Obviously, you can change the backing out to match whatever color you want or put paper or any fun thing behind it. Thank you so much, Shelly, for joining us and for showing us these tips and tricks uh, for vinyl. And join us next time as we get a little creative.